trading is most certainly the hardest way to make an easy living. I bet this is not the reality that you gathered though, by watching the unhinged buffoonery that's plastered all over social media. So in case it was still unclear, I can confirm right away that no, my daily routine definitely does not consist in trading on my iPhone from the back of my yacht as I hold a cocktail in the other hand. So let's cut the retarded clown show for a minute. In this episode, I'm going to take you on a genuine tour of my typical trading day. Most of what I'm going to describe today will most likely be complete news to you since this time you're gonna hear it from an actual trader, not from a professional YouTube scam artist. This video is guaranteed free from me cherry picking that one trade where I pulled 18 grand with a $10 investment in 4 minutes and 27 seconds, or me showing off with my toys and lifestyle, which you probably don't and shouldn't give a damn about. So let's keep it real, practical and to the point. I want you to be able to decide by the end of this video if this is a life that you would truly desire and could handle. So let's get started. I am what is called a prop trader, which is short for proprietary trader. So what the hell is that? Well, since the Dodd-Frank Act that curtailed this business at the pure institutional banking level, we mostly come in two flavors now. The first and most common flavor of prop trading is a business arrangement through which a trader holds a semi-employee slash contractor status whereby he is being trained, then funded with some capital to trade by a prop firm and splits profit with it. The second kind is a former investment professional that gathered enough experience and capital working in the industry to trade their own capital on an independent basis. And that's my case. And that's the life that I will be describing today. Now in both cases, the overall business vibe is about the same. You do not get paid for just clocking in. Prop trading is as close to pure meritocracy as it gets. In other words, you only get paid for what you kill and drag home. There is no room for discretionary bonuses at the whims of a biased boss here. The formula is clear. Your pay is a function of the quality of your research and the flawlessness of your execution. That's it. Now of course the sky's the limit, but do a shitty job and not only will you not get paid, but money will also be taken away from you. How many employees in corporate America do you think would accept that deal? Yet that's what most of them would call the easy life of a trader, as I often hear it. Try to wrap your mind around that one. Now before I go on, I want to remind you that I am a quantitative trader, so everything that follows needs to be seen and understood through that professional prism. I trade quantitatively because, believe it or not, I trade for profit. That means that I do not scalp for pennies to pay dollars in commissions, or use chart drawings and other subjective price action nonsense. I have way too much on the line for that, and I have zero interest in entertaining my broker's lifestyle either. So with these caveats now out of the way, let's proceed. First things first, my nights are full and undisturbed. That means no trade alerts going off at 4 a.m., even during the most extreme phases of market volatility. I will never stress enough how paramount sleep is. Trading is extremely unforgiving. The tiniest mistake can snowball into horrendous consequences before you notice anything, up to and including wiping out your entire account. It does not matter how much of a good job you've done until then. Trading does not hand out participation trophies or get out of jail cards for your goodwill and efforts. So every single day should be lived like it could be your last one in the markets. Even the best traders are not immune from a terminal mistake. Mess up an order quantity or miscalculate your margin and years of efforts can go poof without any recourse. My head must be free and clear from any mind fog or serious distraction. That means waking up whenever my body wakes me up. Within reason, of course, since I don't want to miss my session, so I simply keep an alarm as a failsafe, not a deadline. But you get the point. Just like you don't drink and drive, you don't drowse and trade. Ever. With that said, once I wake up, it's game on. And as you will see, my daily process is clearly defined and segmented. What I want you to understand here is that as an independent trader, you must be the jack of all trades of your trading business. So much so that oddly enough, watching the market and actually placing trades will often take a step back from the rest. And this is fine. That's how it should be no matter how counterintuitive it must seem right now. Remember, you're not just trading. You're running an entire trading business. You yourself are the whole show. That reality means that you have to be the engineer that builds the algorithm, the IT technician that ensures the reliability of your computing resources, the accountant that checks out your trading ledger, and the trader that trades. So on with step one. My day obviously starts with firing off my trading station. Just like an airline pilot, I run a checklist of the vital IT components that guarantee that I will be able to work properly. Now you might be thinking to yourself, why the heck would he be running checks every single day? He's talking like he's riding a space rocket or something. 
And if that's what you thought, I understand your reaction, because that's what I thought as well when I started. Never would I have expected that so many IT related moving parts would let me down so often, until I started trading full time that is. Let me give you this piece of insight. Out of 255 regular trading sessions or so per year, I might only be having 50 sessions where I do not run into any IT problem of some sort the entire day. In fact, as of making this video, we're about halfway through the month and I am yet to spend a single day without something breaking down on me this month. That's how bad it is. Errors are the norm. Everything fully functional is the exception. And I keep discovering new issues too. Like recently, without any warning, the quote updates throttling for no reason and only being fed partially into my spreadsheets, causing me to size some of my trades based on the wrong account equity value. So think of full-time trading as trying to run a 100 meter dash on a rug with people jerking it from each side. Believe me, before you know it, you will feel that these checks are a mandatory part of your daily process. These include three major points of attention. The first one is a speed test of my internet connection in conjunction with my private networks, be it VPN or VPS related. I make sure that everything is stable and I do not get any throttling on micro disconnections. Second check is on my APIs. I make sure that my data feed vendors are not rejecting my requests or sending back a delay warning that would impair the daily refreshing process of my databases and screw up the timeliness of my system signals. Third point, I check the battery status of my UPS pack and make sure it is running at full capacity. In case you're wondering about what I'm talking about here, I made a comprehensive tutorial about how to build yourself a professional trading station in this video, which I will link in the top right. This is a one-stop shop course for you to exactly pick and price everything that you will need and why. That should answer every single one of your questions. Once these checks are done and everything IT related is under control, I move on to step two and check the status of my open overnight trades on those markets trading 24 hours a day or almost such as Forex and cryptocurrencies. Now I'm sure that many of you are surprised that I do. Aren't prop traders supposed to close out their trades every single day? In most cases, indeed, they do but when they work for someone else, that is. As I stated it, I am independent, and I have long determined quantitatively that there are tremendous edges during the overnight sessions, ones that are well worth the risk. In fact, my background quantitative work has shown that they are no riskier than my daily trades, believe it or not, and their risk is just as controlled and quantified. So there is no reason for me not to trade that edge out of pure dogma. Checking my overnight trades is also when I will take a peek into the futures market to get a sense of the general mood of the day and how the pre-market is lining up. Moving on to step three is what I will consider the most important task of the day, probably the most boring part as well, and one that you most likely never heard of. I proceed with my accounts valuation. So what am I talking about here? As most of you would likely know it by now if you watch my trading education videos in order, which by the way you should, it is that quantitative trading requires a painstaking precision at the execution level in order to work, with work being defined as maximizing the replication quality of your trading versus the theoretical results modeled by your algorithm. In plain words, your actual trades must match what the algorithm says they should be. To that effect, there is no way this is going to be achieved without running a three-way check every single day between your own records, your broker's ledger, and your algorithmic signals. You need to ensure that all three match one another perfectly before placing a single trade. Now there are two schools to complete this task. The full automation gang that considers it too repetitive to even bother doing it manually, and the old thoughts like myself who have been in this industry long enough to understand that there are way too many quirks and caveats that a machine won't be able to pick upon, and that this daily check would not be necessary if a few lines of code was sufficient to take care of everything in the first place. Hence this mandatory manual accounting scrutiny. The reason for this effort is that I want to make sure that all bases are covered as far as what happened the previous day and how this is reflected the next morning. Everything needs to line up. I obviously have several trading accounts for different purposes and markets, and I place between 20 to 100 trades on a typical day, which can spike up to 300 plus in the busiest sessions. Because so many things can go south, I use a belts and suspenders approach whereby I manually keep track of each and every single one of my trades in specific databases and spreadsheets, categorized per account and per system. My work is to ensure that these databases match both my broker statement and my algorithm to a T. There can't be any deviation. This manual scrubbing aims to catch the discrepancies that a machine would gloss over and that would either overlook a glaring cash gap that might not even be trading related or return a false positive which in either case would risk messing up my risk management or my order calculation and placement. These discrepancies can emerge from an infinity of reasons like corporate actions such as a stock split, a takeover, a spin-off, a payment in lieu of dividends, etc or be market related, such as a limit order that got hit but not filled entirely, 
or a repainting signal from a system or a stock removed from an index, etc, etc, etc. The fact is, you can't expect your code to catch all of these quirks forever. There will always be the next unsuspected one that will slip through the comp and as a coder, you will always end up chasing your own tail while risking catastrophic consequences in the meantime. And it is not worth it. And at least not worth trying to save half an hour every day. Hence why I stubbornly insist on keeping this reconciliation job manual. On top of my own account's valuation, this job is also required to make sure that my track records properly overlap the true performance of my trading on those trading simulators such as Collective2 that my subs are using. These two are dependent on their own price feed vendor and their own IT, and keeping track of my own algorithmic consistency allows me to spot erroneous simulated executions, bad price feed and rogue equity spikes as soon as they occur thereby keeping the simulated stats where they should be, as close to reality as technically possible. Once everything is pristine, meaning that my track records as well as the dollar and position count in my portfolios both match my broker statements and each system in my models, I know that my allocation is where it should be and I can be confident to move ahead. In case there was an error that needs fixing, I will have picked it up well enough ahead of the opening bell to draw up a contingency plan to rectify whatever discrepancy came up. These plans are another topic entirely, important enough by the way that it deserves being addressed in its own future video. So then that's the moment when I move to step 4 and I fire up the algorithmic update for all of my systems. While the new data is being fed and both my machines and cloud servers are crunching the numbers, there is no need for me to stay at my desk watching paint dry. So this is when I will usually put that downtime to use and do some exercise. On top of my mandatory weekly workout, I like to put in 50 push-ups every day in order to strengthen my back. No matter how ergonomic your chair, you need to remember that the extensive seat time that you will be putting in every day will have your stance deteriorate as the day goes by, your concentration draws you into the action, and you become less and less self-conscious about your physical stance. And for the tall, not so young kind like myself, taking care of my back is primordial. There is nothing worse than trying to concentrate over a back pain. So try to figure out what works best for you, but do not underestimate that aspect. Once this is done, as I wait for the machines to be done running my code, I will generally pick up a cup of tea and read the headlines, but for the entertainment value more than anything else. I say for the entertainment value because 1. I do not use fundamentals to trade at all, and 2. Drawing your information from compromised government propaganda news outlets such as CNBC, Bloomberg or Reuters is likely going to end up in a disaster if you use it for trading, and it has only gotten worse with the flu-19 narrative, so please be warned. I will still use these headlines to spot some turmoil affecting a specific stock however, in order to map the volatility skew in the options market and maybe pull a one-off option trade in case pricing gets totally out of whack at the opening. This last part of step 4 is really anecdotal and is not worth emphasizing. Most days, my algorithm generates the trading signals before that even happens. At which point, it is time for step 5, order placement. Once again, there's the dilemma between full automation and manual placement. Now the account valuation has been resolved, I would admit that the argument against full automation is a more difficult one to be made since lots of catalysts for errors have already been scrubbed out. Still, I like to keep the process manual no matter how many trades I have for the day, because it makes sense from a risk aversion perspective. Now hear me out here. While I would concede that manual order placement leaves room for typing errors, years of doing it have proven to me that this downside is negligible compared to the benefit gained from the level of control retained with manual scrutiny. With the valuation work done in step 3, my level of comprehension of what is going on under the hood as far as the structure of my portfolio allows me to catch a potential error almost instantly and even before it occurs. The key here is to get over the repetitive hypnosis of punching numbers in, avoid being systematic in your workflow, and run ongoing sanity checks to spot strange outliers, like for example having your algo tell you to buy 1000 shares of a stock that were reverse split by a factor of 4 at the opening, leading you to buy 4 times too many shares. This method has saved me from more catastrophic mistakes than I can count over the years, and I couldn't see myself work otherwise. I usually punch these orders in in small batches, and one by one, I will remain on the lookout to pick out what might be wrong with them. Keeping a healthy dose of rational paranoia is the key here. You must remember Murphy's Law at all times, including that trading is not the PlayStation. There is no reset button, and once your order is executed, there's no taking it back. You will have to deal with it anyway, so better early than late. On a side note, I would like you to notice how at no point in this whole process am I sitting here staring at my charts to somehow arbitrarily pick up the so-called best setup and go balls to the wall on it by allocating 100% of my equity to risk 2% of it. It simply does not happen when you trade professionally. Ever. 
With quantitative trading, the only thing that matters is the next trade and realizing your edge through the law of large numbers. And this is exactly what I'm striving to achieve every single day within a well-defined and decorrelated portfolio of systems. If you want to know more about how this is done, I put together another course detailing everything for you to master the concept. Top right. So once my orders are placed, this is usually when I will step away from my desk to run errands or to do something else entirely, like making you guys some more tutorial videos. As I said, as an independent trader, you can allocate your time the way you want, so do take advantage of that flexibility. The only thing that I will not allow myself to do during this downtime running up to the US session's opening is to completely disconnect and watch a movie or something. You have to remember that no matter your time schedule's flexibility, you cannot afford to become lax either, because that's when mistakes happen. Trust me, you will get punished eventually if you do not take that piece of advice seriously. So one way or the other, you have to remain mobilized, if only out of discipline. There's a time to work, and there's a time to chill. And that lapse between order placement and the US session is not it. Then comes my sixth daily step, monitoring my trade executions. The US opening is very important here because that is the moment when the bulk of my orders goes live. This is also the most perilous moment because if something needs to go haywire, that's usually around that time that it will happen. So concentration needs to be maximum. These first 30 minutes or so are a sacred time window that has been agreed with my family that I should not be disturbed under any circumstances unless something literally life-threatening comes up. As soon as the market opens, I will be running broad sanity checks to make sure that target position sizes were hit, that my realized equity margin is consistent with my initial calculations, and that none of my trades were affected by a last-minute exchange outage, or my brokers simply rejecting one of my orders at the last second. If you trade long enough, you will encounter one of these issues at some point during your career. And it is essential to have the process in place to thwart them before their consequences take bad proportions from a mere mistake to a terminal error. Once the heat of the opening runs out, the rest of the day will shift from babysitting my most immediate orders to a more dragged out step 7, where I will be overseeing my remaining limit order fields and especially logging any additional trade executions in my records and monitoring the aggregate behavior of my portfolio both in absolute terms against my algorithmic volatility modeling and in relative terms against my system's benchmarks and indices. The goal here is to make sure that everything is under control and if not, be at the ready to snipe that outlier that might cause the broader issue. An added perk of this ongoing session monitoring is that it will already provide me with a fairly all-encompassing view of my trading activity for that day, making the valuation process on the next morning all the smoother, quicker, and more reliable. At the end of the session comes step number 8, where I will wrap up by matching my trade border with my recorded executions, and I will finish with updating the end of day values for the systems that rely on those to trigger the next day signals. This kind of gives me some preview of what I might expect the following day before it happens. Once done, it is time to close shop and on to the next day, rinse and repeat. Before I close out this video, I need to let you in on three aspects of my routine that are not coming up on a daily basis, but are just as equally recurringly important and that you need to know about. The first one is that you need to make sure that the repetitive process of trading does not come at the expense of how sharp you remain intellectually. In practical terms, it means that you should not settle with your existing strategies, regardless of how well they are performing. There is always more to learn, refine and improve. Now obviously, I'm not expecting myself to waste my time trying to squeeze water out of a rug by over-engineering a simple mean reversion system on the S&P 500. What I'm saying is that you need to allocate time in your process where you will try to unsettle what you know by pondering why such and such system did not perform during such and such market configuration and what you might be missing at the mathematical level. There is no growth in comfort and challenging yourself is important to both remain on the edge of your discipline and competitive in the long term. So you should definitely make research an integral part of your routine. The second aspect is more practical in nature but singularly crucial to your trading performance. Algorithmic trading entails that your strategies, especially equity trading ones, are supposed to tap into a pool of underlying assets and candidates to generate signals. Supply an incomplete database or one that's plagued with gaps, redundant or corrupted values and will be enough to apply a huge drag on your performance. So allocating a few hours each month for data scrubbing and scrutinizing the values provided by your data vendor is essential. No matter the claims and reputation of your supplier, my experience is that you should never rely fully on their promises. There will always be that one takeover candidate, that contract that wasn't switched over to the front month or that leftover spin-off that will have gone through their net and it is yours to catch. This task is what will set your performance and the quality of your work apart from the wannabes, so take it to heart. And last but not least, a third task that is eerily forgotten by most traders. It has to do with basic tidiness, but I simply cannot fathom not taking care of it. 
as you build algorithms that require more and more computing power to run efficiently. Regardless of how many cloud servers you will be using, your home computer remains the heart of your setup from which the living blood of your trading will flow. So you need to treat it with respect. So that means cleaning it on a regular basis before any dust buildup causes excess heat and early damage to your parts. That will spare you many bad surprises. So I make it a point to clean my rig thoroughly once every other month with a complete review once a year which involves taking it apart. I supplement the cleaning process with a weekly wipe of all the parts that notoriously collect grime and body oil such as my keyboard, handrest, mouse pad, and mouse. To some it might seem extreme, but as you go, it will no longer seem like it once your entire livelihood depends on your computer performing at your level every day. Plus, a clean working environment fosters concentration and a sense of control. So make sure you control the controllables and take care of your tools. So how exciting is my life as an actual full-time trader? <laughs> yeah, not really. What do you think? You really have to love that stuff to do it day in and day out and still be yearning for more. Trading is a vocation more than a job. You really do have to live and breathe trading. Otherwise, chances are it will spit you out in a mere few weeks. At least now you're aware of the life routine that you might be choosing for yourself. Anyway, that will be it for that course in our series 2. Up next is our series 3. It will be time for us to zoom in from designing your broad algorithmic framework to focus on the microstructure of your trading modeling and its organization at the trade level. So get ready to turn a page and move up a gear. It's going to be intense. I'll talk to you in the next video. Stay sharp.